Hey guys, uh, I don't want to beat a dead horse with this thing, but uh, I, I kind of finalized this so it ain't just slipped on the end of there. I welded that on. And now that I pissed with it, I want to see if I can uh, make it run again. And I want to show you a little, little bit of the, my setup, what I'm using, and uh, kind of startup procedure. I mean, if you left it go long enough, it probably would damn near self-start. But it does need a little bit of air and a little bit of coaxing to get it going at least quicker, you know. But, uh, alright. This is a propane canister off your blowtorch, you know. And it's got a hole cut in here, two in here. I had to do a lot of filing to get these guys in here. To get these flares, I heated these up with a, with a regular blowtorch and uh, pounded the end of a ball peen hammer into them and they came out pretty nice looking. This is a chunk of Chevy drive shaft and I kind of sliced it all along the uh, circumference and pinched it in just a little bit and welded it. This here was uh, to hook my ground clamp to but I found it, it's, it doesn't really help that much. Uh, I couldn't find the spark plug nut so I just took a junk spark plug it's still through a spark but it ain't gonna go in anything that I own and, and I just welded that in there for keeps. Uh, if I get it running today this will be the last time this engine ever runs I'm just gonna run it and then throw a couple licks of paint on it and hang it up on the ceiling and then I I know right there I got a set of dimensions that I can use to make a running engine and I can scale that up or down whatever I want to do with it. Uh, as far as my fuel setup goes I got a, I still have a regulator on back here coming off of my 20 pound tank I wasn't able to get rid of that and I've heard a lot of people say get rid of the regulators you're not gonna get enough well I get enough and I couldn't get rid of it if I wanted to because uh, this here and uh, yeah these two ends here are reverse thread I mean I could go in town and buy something but I like to do stuff with what I got on hand okay so I got this regulator it's not really hurting me I mean it might might be I don't know but it runs uh, as far as my fuel injectors I got two of them and all I did was just took uh, you know a pair of dykes diagonals side cutters whatever you want to call them and I just cut that right off at an angle and I left it and for some reason that really works uh, on pulsejet.com they refer to it as a Roscoe ejector I don't know if some dude named Roscoe actually came up with it but uh, I read it on read about it on there and it works and there's another regulator on here just uh, Mainly, you know, this this gives you nice control. I mean, so does so does this needle valve right here. But mainly, I guess it's for the control and a convenient manner of coupling my uh, needle valve to the injector setup. So that's uh, that's pretty well it for the setup. Let's see if we can get her going. Okay, compressor's up, and uh, I got this nice long uh, thing soldered to the tip of a blower nozzle and this this works to kind of reach around there and you can you can control it all right some guys are using regulators and they just got this kind of static mounted but I don't have a manner of doing that quickly so I mean I can give her just a little whisper and that works to get it going so plug in the spark you can't hear it like a Model T coil, but and it's working. And uh, definitely get yourself some earplugs because these friggin' things will tear your eardrums up. They're loud. Okay, so low torch. This is what I'll use to actually light it. The spark is just kind of secondary, and it really helps. Just turn that regulator. Well, it starts giving a little bit. Not that much. Alright. Sit 
that thing off because it leaks. Believe me, if you do it right, you can get one hell of a bang out of these things. It's impressive. Okay. So I turn up the gas little by little. Now you can hear it starting to flutter. This thing is stubborn. I'll give her some paint hanging up on the wall and uh, that'll be that'll be my template for ones to come uh, I imagine I'm gonna get a try to get a hold of some stainless stuff like that but uh this first one I just wanted to build something that would be real easy to build common stuff I mean you can find them little propane canisters you can go to an auto shop Get some lengths of exhaust pipe. You can you can find pretty much all of this anywhere. All you need is a welder and you know a grinder, 
some cutting tools, some sort of something. I mean, to, to cut this nice hole out on the propane canister, yeah, I did use the engine lathe. But uh, I'm sure you, could, if you were imaginative and you wanted to take your time, you could do it just uh, by drilling a series of holes in a circle and kind of filing them down. There's a whole bunch of different ways to skin a cat. And this guy here, this is my first attempt. And uh, I did have it kind of sort of doing something, but even when I had it even half acidly buzzing, it was not running on its own. As soon as I take the air away, it dies. It just starts flaming all over. I don't know if this pipe was too short, uh, if it was too skinny. I don't know. Originally I had my plug up here too. I had a hole drilled in there and just had the plug just, just had the hole just filed out just enough to kind of grab the threads on the plug and screw it in there, which ain't a good way to do it. And uh, kind of screws with your airflow anyhow, I guess, you know. Uh, eventually I did the same thing, just welded a plug right into the back of there. And that's actually an old uh, salamander heater plug. <laughs> but uh, the threads were just friggin' going on that thing, so, uh, well, I'm not going to use that for anything. I'll just stick it in there. Uh, and here we go with this guy. A little cold for painting, so I kind of kind of hit it while the pipe was still warm. You know, it don't have to look fabulous. It just has to not look like a total rusty piece of shit when I go hang it up on my ceiling inside. Because, uh, you know, the wife, would, the, <laughs> the wife wouldn't like... A rusty piece of shit hanging up in there and really neither would I uh, it's not a big deal to build one of these though check your scrap yards you'll find all the stuff you need if you can't find it you're not looking hard enough uh, if a gas welder is all you got I don't know if I'd try brazing this or not because some of these suckers get really hot I mean hot enough that they'll probably melt a hole through that mild steel well, I don't know if that propane canister is mild steel or not, but it's pretty thin stuff, so. Brazing, I don't know. Uh, you might want to get all your parts just ready and, you know, get a, get somebody with a welder and, and have them do it up for you. It probably wouldn't cost you too dang much because uh, really there's less than an hour of welding in this thing. If, if I'd have just had everything right and done the first time there would be less than an hour of welding and uh, I don't think he'd charge you much uh, man a lot of trial and error a lot of trying and failing but you know if you build this build one of these suckers and the first time you get it running on its own and it's making noise like that it's making a hell of a noise and that is just a really awesome feeling you know, so I would suggest go out and build one. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Be as safe as you can while you're doing it. You know, safety first. But it's friggin' awesome. I'm going to build more of them. I'm going to build them bigger. I mean, uh, next time I stumble across one of these guys, that'd make a hell of a lot of noise. <laughs> I mean, I imagine the pipe would probably be about as big as that collar, and it would sound, that would make a hell of a roar. I'd probably be using exhaust tube like that for the intakes. It's, it's not a big deal to build one of these things. I mean, I slapped one together, took me some time, maybe trying different combinations, but I got it to work. Uh, there's lots of plans available for free, you know, and you don't have to use stainless. It's highly suggested, uh, especially if you make an engine that you want to run a lot and keep around a lot. But you can do this. I mean, especially if you're good with math, because the math, this thing is all about the math. This engine runs on math. It's not just sticking pipes together. You got to get them right, and somehow I got lucky and hit on it. You know, I just, I imagine a lot of different designs would work. 
Uh, well, there are a hell of a lot of different designs that work. Uh, it's just I'm not so great at math, you know. <laughs> so I just looked at some pictures, read a few forums, pulsejets.com. Definite go there if you if you're interested in doing this. And they got a whole bunch of other types of engine building too. Turbines and ramjets and uh pressure jets, which I'm not sure what they are, but I don't even know if that's an engine or not. But you know, <clears throat> right here I built my own propulsion device. I don't know if it would do much more than push itself or even that. But I build it and it runs and there's just no better feeling than when that sucker takes off. So yeah, be safe. Go but uh go out and do it. You know, don't do it. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to do it in town, at least after dark, because even a small one is gonna make a hell of a noise. And uh when you're first trying to get it running, it's gonna make a lot worse noise. It, it'll be cracking off like a friggin' machine gun sometimes, or just some kind of rifle or something, and people are definitely gonna get upset about that. But you know what? It's all in the name of science. And you're trying to learn something, and you're trying to better yourself. So, you know, try to be respectful to your neighbors, I guess, but go out and freaking do it. Have fun, and thanks for watching.